Hi everybody, this is another Frank Rookie video, and in this video I'm going to test my Fox KL goggles with a 2000 mini watt 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter. And this uh, Fox KL goggles that I'm going to be using, and this is the DVR where I'm going to be recording the video, it's a Fox KL DV01. The radio I'm going to be using is a high tech Aurora 9 with a high tech Optima 9 receiver. And uh, high tech um, Aurora is using a high tech Spectra 2.4 gigahertz module. The aircraft that I'm going to be flying is a DJI F550 Long Ranger, I call it, because to go far. The, and as you can see, that's the video transmitter, 2000 mini watts, plot stick style video transmitter. This is the area that I'm going to be sitting, and I'm going to fly towards above those trees that you see there. But the problem is, those trees, they're going to be blocking my FPV video signal and my radio uh, signal so they're gonna be a little bit of a problem you know for me to get a clear signal to, to those trees okay so I'm about to take off so I would like to talk about this OSD that I got here so that way you guys can you know understand you know what's going on with all those crazy numbers that are gonna be going up and down uh, uh, one thing is that since I live in the U.S., um, the way I set up this OSD is on Imperial. So everything is all about, you know, feet and miles per hour. Uh, but this OSD is designed also to work in metric. And probably the next flight that I'm going to do with this, that probably is going to be across that river that you see on your left side. On that one, I'm going to reset the, the OSD to work in metrics and that way, you know, the rest of the people of the world can, you know, understand better how this thing, uh, you know, works, you know, distance and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, the numbers that you see in the bottom, that is over 1,000 feet, that's the distance uh, from home, those numbers that are going up. On the right side, on the bottom, that's the flying time. In top of that, that's the voltage of the video transmitter, and in top of the voltage of the video transmitter, that's the the meter that tells you how fast you are uh, increasing or decreasing the altitude of the aircraft. On the left side, that's the amperage meter on the bottom, and in top of that, that's the voltage of the main battery. That's why it says P of power on the left side, and on the right side it says V of, uh, of video for the the voltage the video transmitter is uh, sending. Okay, on the center of the screen, you're going to see that circle. It got like a little line pointing like around uh, 5 o'clock. Uh, so that line uh, show, uh, points to where the uh, home position is located. So that means that if I had that line at 12 o'clock, that means that home will, would be you know, straight ahead. So that's the idea of that little line. That's right on the, that circle. On the left side, that's the speed. And currently, I'm flying, you know, like 30 miles per hour, and then it went down to 29. On the right side, that's the altitude, so 200, you know, over 300 feet uh, high. Um, on the top, that's the compass, and it tells me my bearing, so I'm heading straight north. On the left side, top, that's the kind of like the odometer, so it tells me, you know, the the mileage of this flight. On the right side, uh, that's the the string of the satellites that are getting on my GPS antenna of the OSD, and in the top, that's the coordinates. So I'm currently, you know, um, like two kilometers, you know, uh, away from from home position 1.2 miles away and I'm gonna keep going so the problem is at this point one thing that I noticed about my DVR is the signal is gonna go really bad at this point when I'm getting close to those apartment complexes you know straight ahead and the video is gonna jump because one thing that I didn't know about my DVR is that like when the video goes like really bad the DVI just stopped recording and it just start recording back again when he gets the signal again. As you can see, you know, it's just gonna jump all the way up to, you know, 8,000 
our HR had 100 feet. So at this point, I was 1.5 miles away, and that translates to 2.5 kilometers away. Uh, now the problem over here uh, is like on my way back, I was getting a more poor, uh, the signal was uh, more poor than the way it was when I was, you know, flying up north. So I'm, you can see that now the circle in the center points got the little uh, arrow, the little line pointing up at 12 o'clock. That means home is straight ahead. So as you can see, I'm getting a lot of issues with the signal heading back because my camera right now is blocking. The way I mount the camera is kind of blocking the close relief antenna. So, you know, my FPV, uh, my video goggles are struggling to get the signal because of that. Because now, you know, the camera is kind of, you know, beside the trees that are in front of me, I got the camera also preventing me to get the, the signal, you know, directly to my video goggles. Um, so, uh, the deal with this flight that I'm doing right now is I decided to build this aircraft, this uh, DJI um, F550 to go far, and the reason for that is that I built this aircraft to uh, uh, to be able to have some redundancies by having six motors rather than trying to do the same flight with our aircraft with four motors uh, because the uh, flight controller that I do have it does have a redundancy system that if I lose a prop or a motor or an ESC the aircraft will continue flying and that's something that I wouldn't be able to do if I have four motors. If I lose a motor in a quadcopter it's guarantee I'm gonna splash into the water while it's with this hexacopter with the new NASA firmware that I put on my NASA, uh, on my DJI NASA, it allows me to have that kind of advantage. So I can still bring my aircraft back. Um, another reason that I built, I built this platform on a hexacopter too is because it will allow me to use like a large batteries that will, the aircraft itself will be able to lift large batteries that will give me a long flying time. I test this battery already and this battery is it gave me you know 15 minutes of flying time so but it's been just like flying it around you know it's no it's not being like in, intense constant you know flying like I'm doing right here right now you know so it, it, another reason is like this area that you see right now I lost an aircraft right here uh, on that grass, and I, I could have never uh, find that aircraft. Was the uh, F450 heavy lift, uh, heavy lift advance? I lost it right there in that area, and I went like five times looking for it and couldn't find it. So, this aircraft is gonna be you see that bridge there and the river. I, I built this aircraft because I want to go across the river, yeah, I want to fly, you know, alongside the bridge. And uh, but before I do that, you know, one issue that I have to correct is the the camera. You know, the camera is getting um, it's getting crazy uh, uh, yellow effect, as you can see. And that's one of the reasons I'm not gonna post this HD version of this video because I just play it's just horrible. So I have to buy some moon gel and try to figure out a way to. You know, mount the camera when the moon gels, and that way, you know, I will completely and totally eliminate the, the like the all this gel effect that I'm getting. Um, so that's pretty much uh, the plan that I got with this. Uh, what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna continue flying it and to you know flying it around just to the rather than land you know that's the part where I took off and you can see those trees there that, that were the ones that were, that were blocking me while I was really far so I want to keep flying it just to see you know uh, uh, what's the gonna be the real flight time that I'm gonna get on, on this flight I mean my plan was to go probably like three kilometers but Unfortunately, you know, if the if I'm not flying in an area that is completely and totally obstructed, then that's not going to happen. My my the signal on my radio, the signal on the FPV equipment, they're not going to carry the way I, I was expecting to. So 
right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to descend the aircraft. Uh, since I'm in an area that's like a higher ground than this area where I'm flying right now, uh, I want to see uh, how the the signal of the FPV equipment is going to carry on a situation where my uh, um, the signal is going to be blocked not only by the trees but also it's going to be partially blocked by the uh, the edge of the hill while I'm, while I'm standing you know or the, uh, the the area where I'm standing right now and so right now I still you know I'm like 30 feet uh, above the ground but not above the ground the area won't fly above the ground from where I took off and uh, there's gonna be a point when the you're gonna see the altitude is gonna go to negative and when it goes to negative that means that I'm gonna be flying below the area where I'm standing and see how the signal will work and to my surprise see, it's not it's gonna be perfect but for for the 5.8 gigahertz you know it, it was pretty decent I mean I know some people that some people are fly some people are fly most people are fly 5.8 they use uh, fact chart and I mean I know fact chart make great goggles but the FPV technology is horrible with fact shark and most people that use fact shark you know they get so disappointed about the quality of the video that they get that they are forced to use a five, either a 5.8 gigahertz ground station or change their frequency completely to like a different you know FPV frequency like 1.3 or 900 megahertz or something like that but in my case I refuse to you know, I refuse to to use a ground station. I do have a ground station, like I mentioned in some of these videos I made before, uh, related to these, you know, range tests, and I refuse to use it. Right now, I'm flying below the, you know, the area where I was standing, and you can see the signal suffers, but I still managed to see where I'm flying. I was flying. Now, the signal's going to improve because I started going up. And the scene is going to be in line of sight and that's the train and every time I see one of those I love to chase them so that's pretty much uh, my two cents when it comes to uh, the my opinion about ground stations uh, I mean I always been against them for me you know setting up you know patch antennas and tripods and wiring and the battery to power the ground station and stuff that's what makes a waste of time you saw this video all of you guys saw this video that I did 2.5 kilometers you know one and a mile and a half you know doing this flight with nothing and with trees blocking me so this thing was all about you know getting a really powerful video transmitter and put on an aircraft that can carry a large battery so you can have a long flying time with it rather than you know didn't we all kinds of crazy frequencies or, 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 or a lot of equipment that you don't need okay uh, this part um, I set up my gimbal I got a little tiny gimbal in this aircraft like the one people buy for the head trackers um, that they use on airplanes it's a two axis gimbal but I just modified to work as a one axis gimbal so it allows me to look down now this gimbal is not to self stabilize the camera this gimbal is all about you know and me having the capability of looking down where I wanted to rather than just look straight you know like like most people do with most aircraft and uh, right now uh, my light point on since I got telemetry with this aircraft uh, as soon as I reach 10.2 volts on the left side it's gonna go off and that means it's time for me to land this thing and it's now reaching 10.2 volts so I'm pretty much done and I landed so as you can see the maximum speed that I reached and that was unbelievable apparently I got you know like a big current of wind that really pushed me not really really fast uh, you know some tailwind that I got uh, I went all the way up to 67 miles per hour that's like I believe that's like around 
90 plus kilometers per hour, I believe. Uh, uh, the distance was 8,123 8, feet. That's uh, uh, one and a half miles, so 2.5 kilometers. Uh, the 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 height that I reached was 554 feet, so that's like 160 meters, and and that was pretty much it. You know, that's that's the that's the stats. So the next video, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can go across the river. Uh, that's my radio. You can see you got a stop module, so there's no tricks in there. And now I'm gonna proceed to uh, show the goggles. I got two set of goggles. I got um, one that is silver, and the other one is black. I know the picture at the beginning of this video showed the silver one, but you know, that's an old picture. But the goggles that I was actually using it was the the black ones. Uh, I like to have two set of goggles so I can you know bring a passenger along the flight, and that's the DVR that is connected to the goggles. Okay, and that's the video that record this video right here. So. That's pretty much it. So I'm glad that you guys stopping by. I stopped by to see this video, and and I hope you enjoy. So please don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, favorite, and share this video. And thanks for watching, everybody.